Well, here in South Florida, of course, the big story is what happened in Miami-Dade County. For more, let's bring in Facing South Florida host Jim DeFiti. Jim, good morning. So let's begin with your reaction to what you saw last night here in South Florida. Well, look, it, here in South Florida, we saw the president do exceptionally well far better than he did in 2016. In 2016, he won Miami-Dade County, or rather, I'm sorry, Hillary Clinton won Miami-Dade County by 30 points. This time around, the president uh, is only trailing in uh, Miami-Dade County by seven points. That is a massive turnaround. And it's not just here in Miami-Dade County, although that certainly was a bellwether. Across the state, I mean, Donald Trump's numbers, there's no other way to say it. They were exceptionally impressive, you know, across the state of Florida. Four years ago, he won the state of Florida by 113,000 votes. This time, he's winning by close to 400,000. He's got a three to four point uh, lead, uh, you know, ahead uh, in uh, over Joe Biden in Florida. That's a landslide by Florida terms where we're used to, you know, less than a half a percentage point separating uh, major candidates, at the, you know, in these hotly contested races. So a three to four point win is massive. And, 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 it, and it just had a profound effect you know, not across the state, but also particularly here in Miami-Dade County. You saw the president's coattails be able to knock out two incumbent Democratic members of Congress, Donna Shalala and Debbie Mercosal Powell, Maria Elvira Salazar and uh, Carl Jimenez, the two new Republicans going to Congress for South Florida. They rode the president's coattails and were able to ride that to victory. And again, it's not just the congressional races, you know, state house races, state senate races. You're seeing the president's coattails and shoulders being very wide and carrying a lot of people in this race. Danielle Levine Cava, you know, the, who identified as a Democrat against Steve Bovo as a Republican, she barely won her race. She only won the county mayor's seat by about seven points, essentially matching what Biden did here in, in South Florida. There's going to have to be a lot of rethinking about how people view Miami-Dade County in the future. Is this truly a blue county or is it much more sort of a, a county that can swing a little bit to the right on a regular basis, something more like Pinellas? County in Central Florida, but it's it was a remarkable night for the president. I don't think you can underestimate it by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, and Jim, let's talk about what we, what he had to say overnight, uh, claiming victory despite no clear winner just yet. What were your thoughts on that? Uh, look, votes have to be counted. There are a lot of a lot of votes still left, but the president looks to be in a good position in places like Michigan and Pennsylvania. Um, I'm not going to try to say who's who's in a best position, who's in a better position, but votes need to be counted. Look, we don't know usually the all the races on election night. You know, when it's this close, you have to take the time and, and do the work. And I think what the president did was, was exactly what the lessons of 2000 taught us here in Miami-Dade County and in Florida. You know, you declare victory and then make it seem as if the other guy is trying to take something from you. You know, that's what George W. Bush did in 2000 against Al Gore, and it proved successful. And I think that that's what Donald Trump is trying to do here, and we'll see how that plays out. We shall, Jim. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We'll chat with you later.